Huh? Not kind of? Do it. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. That's right. Okay, we're getting ready to move in to the, the committee's uh, piece of this and uh, for the presentation on all that stuff. So the board meeting was officially over, but why am I still up here? I just want you to know on behalf of the board that we owe a great gratitude, of just a tremendous amount of thanks to this Adam and this committee. I'm telling you, they have put tons and tons of hours. Okay? And so <clears throat> I'm going to introduce you to these folks, and I'm going to ask them to stand and hold your applause to the end if you would apply uh, a round of applause again. Bill Pease, uh, Pam Schmidt, Rick Reynolds, Jim Dixon, Dwayne Dunk, Michelle Tolucci, and previous members were Wayne Carey, who's not here tonight, and Mark Allen, who was on it, now who's on the board, which is off. These folks have put a ton and ton of work into this thing. And I'm telling you, they have done a great job. And if you'll listen tonight, we'll learn a lot, ask a lot of questions. And we're here to try to make this clearer for you, OK? And that's the intent. And we want, as a whole, to protect this ranch as much as possible and control as much as possible, OK? But even having said that, keep in mind, Silverleaf owns that property. They can sell it to who they want. It's an auction, OK? And we hope we have good neighbors, you know? If we want to be a part of that and be in the bidding process, you would have to vote on that to allow that to happen, OK? Does it make sense? These folks are going to talk to you all about that. Okay, so please give a round of applause and they'll be on the way. Thank you, Bill. Um, Bill pretty much said almost everything I was going to say, just so y'all know. But good evening. I am Pam Schmidt. Our committee members are here. I was going to introduce them. There they are. Um, we're here tonight, as he said, to provide y'all with as much information as we can. We're going to do that with a presentation, um, who Bill, Bill Peace is going to lead us in that presentation. But before we do that, there's just a few things I want to remind you all. You all know that this room is filled to capacity and there are people standing. So mobile devices, we've heard several go off during the meeting. If you could, it would really help if you could go ahead and silence your mobile devices. We ask that you not conduct conversations amongst yourselves while people are speaking during the presentation or even after. Give people the respect that you would like to have to ask your question and it be heard and that it be answered and it be heard. So we do ask you to do that. There's more than 50 people in here and if you all start whispering, it gets pretty loud. So we really appreciate that. Um, I'm going to ask you all to form a line, but before I do that, um, I want to make sure that you all know we're going to let you ask one question, and then we're going to ask you to get back in line, because we want everybody to have an equal opportunity to be heard. So please be ready with your questions, and try to make them as succinct as you can so we can get as many questions in as we can. We also plan to adjourn the meeting at 9 o'clock, so that gives us a little, not quite an hour and a half, but that should be plenty of time to get the presentation and then get, get some answers. If we can't answer your question, then we'll be um, sending that back out through Adam um, after we all meet and figure out what the answers are. So please be patient with us as we go through this. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Bill. Thanks, Pam. Can everybody hear me OK in the back? Okay, great. Doing a good job. <laughs> so I just want to start with a couple of thoughts. So, you know, my history with, uh, with Holly Lake recently has been, you know, we've had a couple of houses out here uh, for about three years uh, in the recent past. Uh, we started back in uh, the late 80s. My dad had a timeshare in the exact resort we're going to talk about over here. Uh, so we had a really good experience with Holiday and, uh, and not Holiday, and Silverleaf back in the day and, and, and the timeshares and, uh, and enjoying all the amenities 
that are out here. So my history here is pretty, pretty personal. My kids, who are now 40, <laughs> are, uh, were, were like four and five at the time that we were out here. So it's, it's very important to me. We, uh, we, and again, this is, you know, Adam kind of laid out what's going on in the common areas, and they are intertwined only in the way that uh, the, the amenity use uh, by both parties is very much intermixed. And, you know, you guys are probably more aware than me that you've got a lot more years out here that the, uh, the fabric of how this thing got put together, uh, and Adam and I had had this conversation back to, you know, 1971 uh, is, is quite well stitched together and we've had pretty good neighbors and it's kind of kind of worked, maybe barring the, the 20,000 a year we got on the timeshare folks, right? Uh, but it's worked pretty well. And, and so Holiday Inn Club Vacation is saying, you know, we're going to divest of East Texas here, right? We're going to divest of all of Holly, Holly Lake and we're going to divest of, of some other things, you know, down at, uh, uh, down at some of the other lakes and, and, and move on. Now that whole fabric starts getting pulled apart. And so the common areas is a great, would be a great achievement. You know, nothing matters till we get a deed and we get to walk around and show everybody the deed. But we're making good progress on that. On the resort, you know, it is intertwined with us a little bit because the people that use that resort use our amenities. And so, you know, that matters. There will be an agreement, it looks like, at least today, current course and speed, between whoever the new buyer is, and it matters who that buyer is as to what that agreement looks like. So there are some things we don't know. So one of the things we looked at was, okay, if, if, if we were to look, we looked at the impacts of that closing, we've talked about some of those today, but we looked at, well, what if, what if Holly Lake Ranch Association purchased the, the, uh, the timeshares? You know, what might we do with it? What kind of money would that take? You know, we know they're in, uh, as they called it, vintage condition, which means uh, <laughs> late 80s. And they look just like they did when I stayed here with my kids. They look exactly the same way. Some of them you might fall the, through the floor in, right? So, <clears throat> so, so we took a look at some options. So I'm going to go through what those options are. And these are options if we acquired it or in my mind and the committee's mind if anybody else acquired it. Right? These are the kind of things they might do with it. Uh, we'll talk about you know, where this thing might end up in the end uh, at the, on the back side. Okay? So uh, you know, this is kind of the inverse of the, the map that Adam showed. He got to show the good chart, right? all, the, all, the, all the good things we're all going to get. But the, the resort is this little inset. Okay? And you can see all the, you guys drive by this every day, so everybody knows what these are. The, <clears throat> the cabins and condos are a part of it, and we tend to talk about that, but the sale also includes the admin building up there, right? There's also some intertwining with the, the sewer system for the quads, and there's, there's a lot to this thing, okay? But it is effectively everything Holly Lake East, uh, going east down to the Greenbrier Dam, and then 3550 on the bottom side, okay? So you can see that where it's all section four, okay? So hopefully there's no confusion about what that is. Um, there was some discussion about, you know, an easement on the, on the top side for the road access and how all that would look. And it, it'll really probably come down to what somebody might want to do with it and how they might want to enter it. You know, somebody might buy that and say, I want to come in off of 3550. Great. Love it. Right. And that kind of thing. Okay. All right. So that's that. Um, so we're going to talk about the options that we looked at. If, if we did acquire it, we're going to talk a little bit about the auction. Uh, and then I think we need... You know, I, th I expect we're going to get, now that we've got 300 people in here, we're going to get some feedback, right? Um, and, and honestly, I think we need a lot of feedback on this. We need to hear from, from, from the folks. You know, uh, I don't think the board could just say, hey, let's go buy this, right? Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, if we did buy it, what that hill in my mind might look like, right? It's a pretty big hill. It's a pretty condensed time frame, and we'll talk about what some of those are because I think for the association to take a look at this, you kind of got to be grounded in the facts, and the facts are what they are. It's going up for auction, and here's the particulars on it. So we'll talk a little bit about that, okay? All right. So we've looked at, for a while, uh, several options. And the options range from, you know, do you mow all the buildings down and demo everything, 
carve it up into lots, sell the lots, what would that do to association fees, initiation fees, what that, might that revenue look like, that kind of thing. Um, the, that only takes into account just those 42 buildings that sit there. It does not take into account the Silverleaf admin building or anything else. So when you look at these numbers, it does not take into account anything other than where the condos and cabins sit, okay? So we looked at uh, 35 single family lots. Uh, that would include put, having to put roads in, or a road, right? You gotta get to them. We gotta put in water. You gotta tear out what's in there, and you gotta make it look like something else. And you'll see in the financial charts, that's pretty expensive because it costs more than a million dollars to get rid of all the stuff, and then you gotta rebuild it, okay? All right? Uh, we looked at, uh, you know, do we sell the cabins and condos as they sit today? Do we just say, look, if we bought it, we'll just sell unit one, unit two, unit three, and what that might look like, okay? Uh, do we renovate them and then sell them? Well, you could probably get more for it. What's interesting in the charts is you don't end up with a whole lot more money. You just spend more money up front doing the renovation. Uh, you know, maybe it's an over 55 community. You know, it could be a lot of different things over there. And those are things that a prospective buyer is going to look at just like we looked at. All right, it's important to note there's no due diligence been done, okay? They wouldn't let us on the property because they had employees over there. They were trying to work through moving uh, timeshare owners. So one of the things they had to do is they had some people, a lot of people, that had deeds. And they had, you know, two, they had 2% 2 ownership filed with Wood County on that property, right? And so Holiday Inn, Club Vacations, either needs to get those back or they need, need to get in the end, which is what they had to do, is take a vote of all those people that have those deeds and vote to close it. Okay, so just as you guys would have to vote to buy it, they had to vote to close it. Okay, and they held that vote and got that done. I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, so we have not crawled under any buildings. We haven't looked at it. We haven't done any of that. We've made estimates based on you know, conditions we've seen in some of the pictures, and of course they're gonna post the best pictures, not the bad ones, right? Um, and so just, just note that in the charts. And then the financial estimates range anywhere from, you know, maybe you get your money back, again, with no due diligence, that's a big caution. Maybe in three or four years, all the way up to maybe seven or eight years, okay? All right. All right, so assumptions. So we did not assume that anything needed a new foundation or that there was any major work because we haven't been able to go in and verify that. So there's none of that in there, assuming uh, there might be some of that, right? We assume sales would, be, would happen, in one of the cases it was six years, but, but roughly over five years. Renovations would happen over four years. And you know anybody that's done renovations knows, especially in East Texas, having just done one on a house, right? 140 you know, renovations is going to take a couple of contractors, and I don't know, I'm not sure where all those folks would come from. Okay, so it's a challenge. It's a hill. Uh, but if they were renovated, you know, our estimate was about 60000 apiece, thirty five if they weren't. And I will tell you, in my mind, you know, Michelle sells this for a living, right? Those are very conservative numbers, right? I mean, if you think about it, where are you going to get 700 square foot, two bedroom, you know, one bath, anything for $30,000. You'd be hard pressed to get it. But I wanted the numbers to be very conservative, right? I ran a case where, you know, maybe that number's 50,000. It could be a little bit more, don't know. The other challenge is that if you look at this, you say, well, how long is it gonna to take to sell those? So I've assumed over five years, I don't know. You know, if we did a rental, you know, we're gonna find 130 rentals, don't know, right? So a lot of this has to do with the market, and we really got to go look at the market to do that due diligence. So that's what we looked at there. We would expect, and it's in the numbers, to formulate another HOA just like the Condo Association that's over there on the, uh, on the east side of Holly, right? So they've got their own HOA, so they pay that HOA, and our HOA takes care of, of all of that. You'd want something, whether it's a new section or setting up an HOA, to control all of that. Right? Especially if you're going to have rentals in there or somebody's going to do VRBOs or you're going to do something else. Right? Okay, so we would want some restrictions uh, around that. That's one of the risks of somebody else buying it. 
is they probably won't do that. <laughs> we don't know. They might do it, but we can't count on it. The only way we could count on it is if we did it, okay? And then there's ongoing maintenance. You know, you got to cut the yard and do all those things, whether you sell them, rent them, or, or whatever you do, okay? Uh, I did assume uh, dues and initiation fees apply. They apply whether I'm selling them w one at a time or, or we're renting them. They're all built in, so it's into the, into the numbers. Uh, and we would have to have a project manager to do this. I mean, you know what kind of work it would be to do 130 renovations, even four or five years. It's, it, it's a lot of work, right? So somebody's got to look over that. As much as Adam has a lot of extra time, I don't think he can do that. <laughs> He's not that guy, okay? So we'd have, to, we'd have to hire somebody to do that. If we were renting them, you know, you're going to have to have a, a, a leasing person on staff that's going to worry about that, right? If you're, if, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's staff that has to be built in. We have built that into the spreadsheets here. Uh, did we get it all? Don't know. But this is to give you kind of a, a feel for that, okay? All right. All right, so this is my chart. So let me, let me explain the chart. So right across the middle, you can see zero, Okay. Let's see if my pointer works. How's that? Look at that. Whoa, right? So, so zero means if you're below it, you're losing money. If you're above it, you're making money. What this chart is, is a cumulative cash flow chart. So it says, where do I start out with what's in my pocket? So you can see in the, uh, in the uh, sell as is, which is the gray line, okay? So we just buy them and sell them, okay? We start out down here with what we paid, about $2 million. And this is assuming we, we paid $2 million. You know, it could be $4 million. It could be the million, the minimum bid. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. But this was assuming a $2 million purchase. Um, then you start out down here, and then you start selling them, right? And then at, at about year three, you're about got your money back, okay? And then you just crawl your way up to, you know, $3 million or something, okay? So that's the way the chart works. So the orange chart, or the orange line, I'm sorry, is, is what if we renovated them? And then we sold them. So we get more for them, but we got to spend $2.8 million to renovate them, okay? And so you can see we start out a little lower because we got to spend a lot of money. We get back up pretty close, which, you know, doesn't make renovating going to generate any more money because these two numbers are pretty close. This yellow line is, is kind of interesting. This says uh, I want to go renovate them, right? So I spend all this money renovating. And then I start renting them. But it takes me a little while to renovate all of those. Those happen over four years. And then, you know, that's a pretty good line if you're looking at a 20-year, what am I going to do? You know, so that's why apartment complexes work, right? So they make a big investment up front or they do a renovation and they make a lot of money, okay? But they make it over a lot of years, okay? And, and you also have to manage this. You become an apartment complex with a leasing agent and, and staff and all that. This blue line down here is the one that says, okay, I'm going to go demo. I'm going to wipe it all out. Let's go in there with a the big bulldozer. We're going to cart it all off. We're going to spend a million dollars making that go away. We're going to buy the land, and we're going to carve it up into lots. The problem with that scenario is that if you went with that, you, with 35 lots, you, you never make your money back. And so that's why you see that it starts down here at $4 million and just gets worse over time. Okay? And that's because... I'm going to have some maintenance over time, and that's going to exceed what I'm bringing in in dues. Okay, and that's why the number gets worse over time if I go down here. Make sense? Okay. All right. So the sales status. So, you know, there's been a lot of discussions. I won't get into all of them uh, with Holiday and Club Vacations over the last nine months. Um, but, you know, they've always said, well, we're going to sell that. Well, we've got to get our timeshare people all moved to Branson or wherever it is we're going to move, and then we've got to do this vote and all that kind of stuff. And that's why Adam referred to phase one and phase two, right? So we were going to work on the common areas, and then way out there when they got all that done, they were going to put a sign out there and, and try to sell this thing. Well, their board or, or organization decided that the way they wanted to do this was an auction, Okay. And so on January 23rd, a couple of weeks ago, they said, well, we're going to do an auction. We're not going to put a sign in the yard. It's going to be a 48-hour auction, March 4th and 5th. It's going to last 48 hours, okay? 
and it's got a $1 million minimum bid with an unknown reserve. Are they likely to have put a reserve? Yes. Do we know what it is? No. It's not the kind of thing you generally announce, right, uh, what that's going to be. So all we know is it's a $1 million in your, in, in, you know, as your beginning bid. And then the other thing is no contingencies. You've got to have the cash to bid, right? And the reason is they want to wrap up getting out of East Texas. So I need to move the common areas. And I need to get out of this, and I need to go on with my life. And that's the way corporate investments are done. It's very, I've had a lot of experience with those guys. Uh, not these guys, but with Exxon. OK, all right? All right. Uh, challenges. So this is the, if we decided, we, this organization, decided we wanted to bid, OK? These are what we consider to be the challenges. So I've talked about the minimum bid. Yeah, they, we got right by those challenges, didn't we? Okay, and on, you know, and we don't know what the, what the, what the winning bid's gonna be. It could be two million, it could be 10 million, we don't know. Because it depends like any other auction, eBay or anything, who's up, who wants to bid, who wants it. But Wood County has it on the tax rolls at 4.6 million. So that gives you at least a number, okay? So we got a minimum bid and we got that number and that's really all we have, okay? All right, property taxes are about $50,000 a year. Uh, more informational than a, than a challenge, other than that would have to be added to our budget, right, uh, if we owned it. Biggest challenge is time squeeze. So the auction starts in 27 days from today, okay? And we require by our bylaws uh, and 209 that we've got to vote. The members have to vote, yes, I want to do this, uh, within 21 days. So that's how long we have. So we can announce a vote, get to the end of it. That doesn't leave us a lot of days to go do anything, okay? So we've got a squeeze timeline for sure, okay? Um, this one's really important, you know, because if, if we're going to go make a bid, if we chose as an organization to go make a bid, we've got to have that money in our pocket. Currently, we don't have that money in our pocket, okay? The principal reserves are a million dollars or give, give or take. Okay, we don't know, is this gonna go for a million, is it gonna go for five, we don't know. But whatever it is, you gotta have the money. And so if we don't have it, then we gotta run get a line of credit of some sort, and since you can't have any contingencies like you would with a house where I'm gonna put that asset up for sale, or I'm gonna buy that asset and I'm gonna use it as collateral, right, you gotta have the cash, this would have to either be a unsecured line of credit or we would have to have some other assets that the bank says, yeah, those are worth this much, and, and, and you'd be able to cash out for that, okay? So that's a challenge. Uh, you know, if the members want to do this, we could do a member assessment, right? $2,000 a piece is $4 million, right? So could it be done? That's a, another way to raise the money. I will say, though, that with this auction starting in 21, 27 days and this vote requirement, we'd have to collect that amount of money pretty quick. So we've got a bucket at the door, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> okay, all right. And then, and then from a risk to the organization, you know, okay, well, we, we, we caught this train, and we have it, okay, what are we going to do with it, right? So there is no question a multi-year effort to figure out what to do with it, to do, do, you know, I don't know what we want to do. We'd have to decide what to do with it, but it wouldn't be overnight. It'd be an effort. So, all right, and then down at the bottom, this is one we're not sure of. Uh, there are potential issues with, you know, the, we're a nonprofit corporation. So, uh, you know, what we aren't is a development organization that's out buying land and renovating it and selling it and doing that kind of thing. Could we do it under our current one? Don't know, it's a legal question. Could we set up a separate LLC that hangs under this one? Probably could. So there's probably a legal way to do it. The point here is that takes time, a little bit of time, to go figure it out, okay? It's not a hill you can't get over, but it is something we'd have to look at, okay? All right. Where are we at here? Okay. So what could happen? Well, the reason you guys are all here is because of what could happen, okay? Um, somebody's going to buy it. 
us or somebody else. Uh, it, it, current course and speed, they're going to have access to the amenities. And as Adam said, we don't know what that looks like yet. Right, so somebody, uh, you know, goes with the, I'm going to carve it up into lots scenario. Okay, well, let's just say everybody pays dues just like we do, and we can all understand that, and that all makes sense, right? Uh, in the case of the timeshare, it was a different metric because then they had, you know, stay nights and, I don't know, a dollar a week or whatever ridiculous number it was, right? And so, so until we know who that buyer is, we don't know what that looks like. And so the agreement with the Holiday Inn guys is when they know who the buyer is, the agreement we have together is that we will sit down and negotiate something that deals with the access that is right for us and right for that buyer, right? So anybody that read the bid knows that, you know, it, it says has access. You can fish on the 210-acre lake, you know, things like that. What it doesn't say is how much that's going to cost, okay? But in the LOI, it deals with this subject, and you guys will see that. Once we get that signed and we get that published, it deals with this. We've agreed with them, and they've agreed that, you know, it needs to be related to who the buyer is, what the buyer is. We don't know any of that yet, okay? Again, they sell it to whoever they want to. And right now, we don't own the common areas, so it's very difficult to say, well, we'll just cut them off, right? I mean, so we want to get that done, and then, and then we want to negotiate something that, that kind of works for both sides, okay? All right, and then... The members, you know, there's a lot of discussion. The members, there are some members that are saying, well, you know, I don't know, maybe I ought to go buy it. It'd be a good thing, right? In my mind, at least. Um, and we've talked about this a lot. In that case, you'd end up with at least someone that's a homeowner here that would care about the property values and what they did to it, right? Now, the other thing I'd say is that Whoever, if somebody buys that and spends $5 million on it, they're probably not going to say, let me put $5 million down and create a piece of crap, right? They probably are going to say, I'm going to put five down and make 10, right, or something. So they're going to try to make money. It doesn't always work out that way, and we don't know what that looks like, right? If the bid's on the low end, maybe that's different, right? Maybe it looks like something else. So the biggest unknown is the, the reason everybody's here and the reason we're having this conversation, Okay. So homeowners could do it, and, 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 you know, honestly, tonight we need some feedback. We need some feedback from you guys on what do you think, right? And I expect we'll get it as soon as Pam runs around with the microphone. All right? All right. And then if the auction is not successful, so they don't hit their minimum bid, and they say, you know, well, it just didn't work out. We tried. You know, they've got a responsibility to these timeshare owners that still have deeds that, when it sells, those guys get a dollar or two. Probably won't be more than, much more than that, but, but they'll each get a dollar right, or something. And so they've got a, a, a fiduciary responsibility to do the right thing for their owners. So that's why they're going to go to, that's my speculation, is why they're going to go to auction. They need to test the market and see what the market will bear so that they can say, we did that. Otherwise, probably get sued. Just be my thought, but I don't know. Okay. So if they don't hit that, then maybe they circle back to us and we have another conversation about what we might do, what it might become, how it interrelates with the common areas. Don't know. But that bottom one is kind of a hope strategy, <laughs> right? And that's not much to count on, okay? All right. It's not usually a good strategy. I've, I've done that strategy before, though. All right. So, um, you know, at this point, we'd like to hear from you guys on what do you think? I mean, because, you know, stepping off and, and buying this, uh, if we had the money in our pocket and figure out how to get the money, is, is a bit of a risk, right? It is. And, and, you know, in my mind, this is, you know, if you just said, okay, what would you do on an investment? You'd run the numbers and that kind of thing. But I don't think, for me, for me personally, I don't think this is about an investment. I mean, I think it's about control of what we want Holly to be. And so, you know, if, if the ranch decided to buy this, I think it would be more of a defensive strategy. What am I trying to keep from happening? As opposed to, I looked at the numbers and, damn, that's a great investment, okay? Uh, the problem is that defensive strategy costs money. Okay, all right. 
That's all I got. Yes. <laughs> then you'll have to get back I in line. It. I love it. Okay. Um, before we get started, and I will let Bill go first because he's standing up and I'm going to be nice. Ooh. I'm not going to make him go sit back down. But um, when you do come up, we would really appreciate to know who you are, so give us your name, and we'd also like to know your section number, because that kind of sometimes helps us know where you're coming from by knowing what area of the ranch that you live in. Um, but if you want to get in line, feel free to do that, or you can wait until that question is asked. Once you've asked your question, please feel free to sit down or get back in line, and then we'll go to the next person. Here we go. Bill Cassidy, Section 8, next to my brother. My question is that you said that they could come in and buy it, and my understanding was that they could set their rules. Okay, I'm confused here. Now, Adam said we sent a letter of intent on our common property. Will they be able to take that common property from us? So... Okay, so if I understand it right, so the question is, let's make sure we get the question, right? So will they be able to take the common property? You mean the, the new resort buyer? Is yeah, that your that, question? That, okay. Yeah, right. With agreement that to our letter, to with our, our, our LOI, that we agreed with Holiday Inn. Yeah, or Silver, Silver Leaf. Yes. Yeah, right. Now, will they be able to come and say, no, we want all the common property? The, re the resort buyer wouldn't be able to. Okay. So, the, yeah, the resort buyer wouldn't be able to do that. What will be negotiated with the resort buyer, uh, unless something changes in, in the sale, is, is, is the amenity use and what that's going to cost. <laughs> Mike Western from Section 4. Appreciate the work that you all have done. I have a question about the... Has there been a study of what Holiday Inn has brought in through their co their cabins and their condos, like say over the last five years, to make it worthwhile for us to buy it if we did? Because I know we're out here in the middle of nowhere. A lot of people don't come and rent uh, a place out here where there's really not a lot to do except for what we have. Yeah. But the only way we can protect what we have is to buy it. And I'm I'm for the 2,000 a household, but I just wanted to know if you guys did a study on that. So if we do buy it, we know we're going to have income right off the bat, you know, not have to wait. We can always fix them up on a slow. We yeah. don't have to do it all at once. Yeah. They're, they're renting them right now. So, yeah, they are. Or they were. The, yeah, I don't know how many they rent. We've, we've not studied how many they rent. We do have some feel, right, Adam, with, with – how many days they paid us for, which would be some indication of how many people stayed there. Um, so, you yeah, want to speak so to that? We do have a, a, a bit of a feel. I'm not going to say we have an understanding. We have a bit of a feel. Um, them sharing exactly how many folks stayed per year and per night and all that stuff um, wasn't something that we were privy to. Um, but if we look at kind of what they got or what they gave us through the fees and the dues and things like that. I think it's around twenty thousand um, dollars, about twelve ninety a person as they come in, if I remember correctly. Um, it doesn't equate to a whole lot. And I would also offer, if a multinational company is successfully packing the house over here, why are they shutting it down? You know? That's right. Um, and then the other thing, uh, Mike, you mentioned, you know. We don't have to do it quickly. We could do it over time. The other thing we have to, to consider, and, and Bill hit on this, is what is the carrying cost? The carrying cost just for keeping the lights on over there, just from keeping the pipes to freeze, just to keep all that stuff, that carrying cost is substantial to us. It, it, it truly is. So hope that answered your question. Jan Brannon, Section 4. Um, my question is on the property taxes that are assessed, mm -hmm. is that on improved property or just the land? That was, that was based on the $4.6 million Wood, Wood County uh, assessment today times the rate. 
involved. Oh, I'm sorry. So there's acreage is involved in that. Yeah, there's 128 acres total. Yes. Yes. So just a quick question on the amendment. Keith Whitmore, Section 4. Uh, is the spillway included in that transfer in the amenities? No. Not. Huh? It's yeah, it's not owned by Silverleaf. Hi, Shauna Mulkey, Section 7. Uh, great job to the committee and excellent presentation. Thank you. Um, I have a question, though, a clarification. It's been many years since I looked at this in detail, so I'm, I'm a little confused. Adam met with representatives from Silverleaf Resorts on the common land, but we're talking about resorts, Holiday Inn Resorts, they don't own the common land, they just own the, the, the resort. Is that the, correct? The same organization owns both. It's Holiday okay. Inn Club that's, Vacations. That's what I thought, even though yeah. he, Adam's using the term Silverleaf Resorts and yeah. you're using the term Holiday Inns, but it's all, all one. Yes. Okay, so then there's so the auction, is the auction selling, advertising the common lands? No, okay. absolutely not. So, so it's done section four, talking about the common areas. Mm -hmm. They're online, it says that they would have access to all of Correct. all of our common properties, but then we're saying we're going to negotiate that with them. So we're going to negotiate the fees associated with it. Well, so yeah. Do, so is the person who's bidding on that know that I the common know. areas are not included? The, in the this? answer is I don't know, okay. right? I don't know if they've had that conversation. Uh, I know that the LOI has the verbiage in there, right, that says that, right? Uh, the bid that's public out there, right, that I've read and you've read, says they have access. What it does not say that I could find is they'll have access for a dollar a day or a dollar a week or $300 a day or whatever the number is. It doesn't say that, okay? So, so I mean, that's clearly something that if we're going to, the agreement with them is that, at, at least at a high level, is they're going to do the auction and they're going to have a buyer. So they're going to have somebody on day one, that's on the fifth, that says, all right, it's mine. And then they're supposed to get with us and say, okay, what's this going to look like? That's what they've agreed to do is talk to us, not specifically on the fifth. They know that they have to negotiate that part with us. Holiday Inn Club Vacation does. I do not know if the buyers have been told that. Do you agree with that? Okay. Jackie Western, Section 4. Yes. Do you know if the letter of intent is going to be finalized before the auction? We hope so. Yeah, so we've, there's a couple tweaks to the letter of intent. We expect that to circle back with them, and then we, we should be able to execute it if everybody agrees. So we would try to do that, yes. Joe Elkington, Section 4. This will be a two-part question. I couldn't really ah, see ah, the, getting around the rules. Very good. Couldn't see <laughs> the detail really good on the map. But mm -hmm. where does the property for the fire department and the equipment fit into all of this? And what happens to the fire department? It's yeah. It's it's not part. Yeah. Of, go ahead, Adam. Yeah, that that doesn't include. Um, is in no way associated with Holly Lake Ranch. The Holly Lake Ranch Volunteer Fire Department actually sits outside of the boundaries of the ranch. So that, that is, or Holly, I'm sorry, I said Holly Lake Ranch Fire Department. That's incorrect. It's Holly Lake Fire Department. <laughs> but that sits actually off the ranch. So this sale, the common areas, is in no way impacted or affected or influenced by that. Dan Brennan, in Section 4. If we take the need to make a profit off of this, out of it, and just decide we want to buy it and get rid of what's there, don't feel a need to rebuild anything, mm -hmm. that's why I ask about the property taxes. Once all that's gone, the property taxes should be lower because there's no amenities there. I, I would agree. It's just dirt. I mean, yeah. It, and that so would be if fair. it sells for a million dollars, basic, they're opening bid, mm -hmm. that would be like $700 a household or something like that, mm -hmm. taking just a few, I mean, not all the houses. Right. 
Are we going to be unhappy that we didn't get control of that for $700 a household? And go, <laughs> boy, weren't those people stupid back 20 years ago like we're doing now? I'm talking about people back in the day. Yeah, that's the literal, I mean, literal million-dollar question. What is peace yes. of mind worth? <laughs> so, you know, one, one thing I would say is that, you know, to mow everything down and just have dirt, our estimate is at least a million dollars. Plus the purchase price. So it's $1,300. You're not going to find me disagreeing with you. <laughs> I agree, yes. Shauna Mulkey, Section 7. What kind of ownership is going to be conveyed in a title policy? I, I've not ever heard of... The, the word transfer it's, bothers me. You're not gonna, they're not going to sell it to us. They're going to they're, transfer it. So, so the, the, the words in there is they're going to transfer it. What's actually happening when you read it is, is we're buying it in consideration of $10, okay? With a warranty What we deed? would get is a deed, Adam, okay? Adam mentioned so the quick claim deed, but uh, so they, said y'all rejected that. They originally said we'd like to do it with a quick claim deed, which didn't give us any protection at all, right? Right. right. Uh, and so it is not clear yet, maybe you want to comment, Michelle, but it's not clear yet exactly what kind of deed we will have to it, but it won't be a quick, quick claim deed. Okay. Do you have a microphone? Yeah, just. No, there are four. Okay, there's quick claim deed, which basically you say, I'm, I don't know if I have an interest in this property. If I do, it's yours. You know, um, then the next level up is a deed without warranty that basically says, I have an interest in this property, I am transferring it to you. But I don't warrant that there are any title defects. The next level up is a special warranty deed. Special warranty deed basically says, um, I have an interest, I haven't done anything to mess up title since I've owned it, and I'm giving that to you. And then there's general warranty deed that basically covers you from the beginning of time. We're still in process of trying to work through that. That's, that's kind of that's that's kind of down to the details of where we're at on the letter of, of, of intent. Right. As far as what level we can get, I have been working with the title company. We believe we can get title insurance, but it's going to really depend on which one of those deeds that they're willing to give us. Chris Prime, Section One, and I think Adam said we would have to vote on the LOI once it's finalized which takes the 21 day notice, which could we get, I mean, if we don't get all this done before the auction closes, if they sell, isn't that third party, there's a chance they're gonna to wanna to get involved or say, wait a minute, I know we it says we're gonna negotiate with them, but can we get this all done without that third party messing things up? Yeah, the, the, the LOI says that, uh, and that's why it's so critical to get it signed. It says that once signed, they can't market that common area to anyone else. So it's critical that that gets signed. So what, what we would want to avoid is that, that you know, some buyer steps up and says, I want to buy that and I want all this other stuff, okay? And so we want to avoid that. So we want to get the, the common area thing, the LOI signed. Once that's signed, it says they can't negotiate that with anybody else. It's, not, it's non binding, absolutely. Until you got a deed in your hand, there's still, there's still some risk it doesn't happen. Jan Brennan, Section 4. <laughs> I might have missed this, but I got the short time frame part. Uh -huh. So, at what point are the homeowners going to be offered the option of, hey, we do want to buy this, and once we get it, then we'll decide what we're going to do with it. I mean, would it be a two-step thing? Well, so what would have to happen, given where we stand today, 27 days out, is we'd have to put out, you know, make, make an announcement that the homeowners are going to vote on this, so you know it's coming. We'd have to get them in the mail, and we'd have to get them back. That's what would have to happen. But we'd also have to figure out the funding. And, and the price. Right. You'd also have to think. Yeah. I'm right. sorry. If you don't have the price, you don't know how much money we need to collect from you. So right. there are 
obstacles in between that because the vote would have to include how much you're willing to pay for it and that would we'd be stuck at that we would not be able to offer more or less it would well we could offer less i guess but you could not right. offer more and then we we also have to have the cash on hand we have to prove that we have the money on hand are we going to be able to collect let's say you tell us to bid two million are we going to be able to collect from you all two million dollars in a couple of days so be ready, you know, just those are the things you have to consider as the homeowner. Can we take a show of hands tonight? Okay, we got one check. Next. <laughs> Mike Zuck at Section 9. My question, <clears throat> who couldn't hear me? Mike Zuck at Section 9. Okay. All right. <clears throat> My question is, if this sells... Are they going to have access coming through our gate? Yes. Current courts and speed, they would have access because there's an easement there's down an easement. The, uh, the front gate that allows them to get to their property. So, yes. Uh, I'm David Woodson, uh, Section 5. Is that right, dear? <laughs> um, I, I'm, it may be left field, but is anyone open to bid in this auction? Anyone? Oh, absolutely. Like perhaps the federal government? Yes, sir. Okay. And should the federal government wish to acquire this property because it is an existing dwellings that they could put people that they prefer to put in existing dwellings in, uh, yes. is that a possibility? Sure. Uh, could they even, I'm sorry, that is it one more? Uh, That's all right. Uh, could uh, they do the, what's the term, um, eminent domain that even if they should want to? It, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, for me, that comes back to the uh, defensive move, right? You, rather than buying it for an investment, that's clearly a defensive move is to keep those possibilities from happening. Hi, my name's Theresa Wagner, and um, I have a, oh, section four. Um, okay. <laughs> my question is, you said it was the timeshare property. And I think the ad shows a total of 120 acres, 130 acres, 128 acres. Does that include the woods, the individual property IDs, the woods over to Lyle'sville? Yeah, so. Which is extending below, beyond right. the five timeshare plats. Yes. So okay. let, me, let me clarify what I, what I said, if I understand your question right. So when I said it includes the timeshare area, right, that was really where we were looking at keeping existing buildings or, you know, mow it down, put 35 lots. Did not take into account what we might do or not do with the rest of that land. So the auction is 128 acres that is from 2869 East Holly, Greenbrier Dam, down to 3550 and back. So it includes a lot of land that is beyond. Now, some of that's in the floodplain, right? Yeah. So, but it's all of that. And how far beyond? How far beyond? How far beyond the phase five of the timeshare property on that plat? Goes down to the Green Bar Dam. Well, that's about where it is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yep. Michael Zuckett, <laughs> section nine. <clears throat> My question is to Adam. Um, you talk about the common properties. There was no mention made of the roads. You know, we don't own the roads, or do we, do we own the roads? <laughs> Short answer, long answer. Long answer is probably better for you and I. 1971, we look at the plats. If you look at those plats, where, the, where does the plat for each one of those individual lots end? It terminates in the middle of the road. If you look at your survey, what does your survey say? I bet it probably says it ends at the easement of that road. 
But if you look at your subdivision uh, plats, and then that stuff that's on the side there that's real hard to read, um, it sure does look like you own to the road, but there is a perpetual granted easement for access and travel through those roads. Right, that's, that's not really the answer to the question. You said who owns the does, roads? Does Holly Lake Ranch own the roads, or does Silverleaf own the roads? You own the road. A couple different ways to look at this, right? If it is in front of your house, technically, you own the road halfway to the middle in front of your house. If it is down here going across the dam, that would be associated with common areas. <laughs> I'm going to send you a yeah. bill for the paving. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll cut you the Shana deal Wolf of a century. In section 7, the majority vote, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, majority of the voting members, not majority of the members. So if they don't vote, then they don't get any say. And 51% of the voting members is all you need, right? Yes. Of the voting members, yes. the way it's worded. Uh, and then, you mean of the people that vote? Absolutely. Yeah, yes. and since you gave the other guy three questions, um, the other, and you're going to, yeah. Um, have you considered an attorney named Schaefer in Longview? I don't know why it's, if that's me or? That was me. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, an attorney named Schaefer in Longview wants to advise us that if we incorporated Holly Lake like uh, Hideaway did, then we could annex annex the common properties for free. But I mean, if this transfer goes through, there's no reason to do that, but. Uh, it's an interesting question. I don't good. know if we've ever looked at it. Thank you. I think, uh, I just kind of wanted to say one thing about yeah, us. On. Oh, I'm not on? Yeah, come yeah. on. Um, Fifty-one percent of the voting members would have to vote for this, correct? You're talking about a possible thousand to two thousand dollar assessment, which would have to be basically paid up front. What happens to the rest of the percentage that voted against it? What are our chances of collecting? You saw our collection numbers. And I would be very concerned that we would have an awful lot of people that can't afford it, don't care if we voted for it, ain't gonna pay it. So Hey, mind if I hold it? No, yeah, okay, sure. Hey, uh, uh, <laughs> okay. hey, Robert Long, Section Eight. Hey, actually, I I was going to ask something about that. Uh, you know, the two thousand dollars versus collections. I mean, would it end up turning into ten thousand per person who's willing to pony up the money? But hey, uh, so we already got that answer. But hey, uh, the other thing, uh, there was a guy over here, Section Five, I think, who asked if it was possible for the federal government to buy the land. I guess in your research, have you? Do you have any idea what the likely profile of a buyer would look like? I mean, do you think it would be more likely a private investor or more likely, a, you know, public entity? Any ideas there? No. No, we did. We did look a little bit at uh, Dwayne pulled pulled some information that talked about, you know, income in the area, uh, low income housing, regular, you know, m rentals, and, and and that kind of thing. We did look at some of that, but I don't think we really profiled what the the most likely was. The, um, in the discussions that we had with, you know, and this again is speculation on their part, with the uh, Holiday Inn folks, as they said, you know, likely a, a multifamily uh, kind of organization. But, you know, at the end of the day, they really don't care, right? right? I mean, they, they put it up to bid and they don't care who buys it. Right. Yeah, so, or, they said so most likely, or sorry, or, uh, so you're saying they said most likely, uh, I guess, basically an apartment complex. Man yeah, something company. like okay. that. And their, and their reasoning behind that, because they also said, you know, that, that what we might, you know, if we, if we were going to look at tear it all down and, and, you know, just do lots, that that probably wasn't going to, is going to be a non-starter. And if you look at the numbers, it's kind of where it is, right? And so their point was that that's probably not going to be what it is. It's probably, you know, but again, they're speculating. And again, they don't care. <laughs> right, exactly. That's right. Belinda Flowers, Section 8. I may have been confused during the first part of, during the actual board meeting, Adam, when you were talking about the letter of intent. Did you say that we would be voting on the letter of intent? 
the property owners would be voting. So when the reason I'm asking this is because then I heard 21 days, 27 days. And so yeah. I'm not sure. Now I'm just confused. So. And, and I see that. Now that you say it like that, voting on the letter of intent, what I meant is we will present a signed, non-binding letter of intent to the members of this organization. You will vote to either accept or deny that. Not vote to sign the LOI, but rather LOI is done, signed, executed. Here it is. And then we're asking for your vote to contract is essentially what it would be. For the common areas. Again, right. phase one common areas. Yeah. Right. Ileana Sukta, section four. Did we negotiate anything with them in regards to seeing what bids are coming in before they accept anything? We, we have absolutely no authority to do that. That would be like you and I are neighbors. And I'm going to sell my house, and you're like, but wait a minute, these are going to be my neighbors. Adam, I need to approve who's going to buy that house. That's something in a business that they'll do. So yeah. that's why I was just wondering yeah. if they, that they was did not extend that no. courtesy to us. Robert Weber, Section 4. I was wanting to know is the LOI going to be signed before the auction, or do you expect it to be? Sure, I, heard, I sure hope so. Yes, sir. If it were up to me, we would have it signed by now, but we need it to be right, um, not right now, you know. So hopefully with, well, I sure hope so. <laughs> yeah. We're trying. Hi, Cynthia White, Section 9. Uh, I was curious, I expected some feedback tonight as to whether or not there are, it, whether there's a group of individuals here at the ranch that are, maybe of means that want to get together and create a group in a timely way to at least create that defensive move and buy it or just investors. I personally have talked to people who have expressed interest in wanting to buy it. Yeah, and I've, I've heard similar things. I know, you know, Adam's heard similar things. Um, I, I don't know the name of anybody that's, that's ready to write a check, uh, but there, there clearly is conversation going on. You know, whether that culminates in somebody going out and doing it, I don't know. So I don't know if that answered your question, but it, it, it'd be nice to say, yep, the group's over there and go talk to them, but I, I just don't know. Jane McCoy, Section 4. I guess my question is, why would the members need to vote on the LOI? Why can't that just be signed and done? Yes, ma'am, and that's what will happen. So we will sign the LOI. Silverleaf and Holly Lake Ranch signs the LOI. What you will get is an executed and signed LOI. The terms of that LOI are what you're voting on for phase one of the common areas to then either accept, decline, whatever, that, that offer. So My question is, but why would we need to vote it? Why can't just like that be a board? I mean, that's, it seems to be a no brainer. Why would it have to be voted on? Hey, bylaws, your bylaws state. <laughs> right, so, so Adam, let me just, let me, let me make because a comment. Because we're increasing it's, the boundaries or the it's, it's the acquisition yes. of property. So if you look in your bylaws, there are several different circumstances that require and mandate a homeowner vote. Um, and that's, that's one of them. Yeah, the vote, the vote's really not on... It will be on the LOI because you'll see the terms, and that's what he's talking about, right? But the vote is, does Holly Lake Ranch Association approve or disapprove the acquisition of that property into? And that's what's in the bylaws. So it's the change of the property structure that has to be voted on. The LOI tells you the details of it. I'm Ron Pilot, Section 9. Um, seems to me that, um, not to be an alarmist, but we are uh, in jeopardy here at Holly Lake Ranch. Um, we uh, appreciate all of the hard work that everybody has done, and uh, this is a great, great information, and uh, it uh, looks very promising, and we can all hope that everything goes well, and like you demonstrated that... Uh, if the thing does fall apart for them, we have an opportunity to pick it up. 
My question is, what if it doesn't? What if the LOI doesn't go through? What if they sell it to the U.S. government? What if, what if, what if? Right. We have no guarantees. So if we back up to a place to where we do have a guarantee, where would that place be? What would that look like? Who would have to be involved? What do we need to do to get there? That's a great question. Well, I think we could what if, you know, a lot. And I, you know, I, I share the concerns, obviously, of, of everybody out here. Um, but I think it all boils down to control, right? Mm -hmm. um, so how do we gain control? Well, in 1971, if we just would have bought this place and kept a hold of it, but that's not an option. If, you know, when they sold it to uh, Mead, if we would have bought it, that's not an option. If we, all these different things. Um, so really the, the control is, and you mentioned the common areas, if that doesn't go through, my question would be, are we any worse off today or than we would be tomorrow? Because isn't that the agreement that we have now? We have a perpetual easement in place that allows us to utilize these things, even if somebody down the street bought it and said, you can no longer use your swimming pool. Ha, ha, ha. But yes, we can. Uh, and we pay taxes on it, and we do things. So I think there's reasonable assurance and certainty. There's never 100% certainty, but reasonable assurance and certainty that the protection of the common area is, is, is fine. We have an opportunity to increase that and now own it. And now it's your asset and now it's your control. But when it comes to over there, the only mechanism that I can see at least for control is to own it. But is owning it, and this is the fundamental question, is owning it with a potential financial risk of losing everything else worth the ownership? I mean, and that's the balance that you all would be voting to balance on if, if that were the case. Um, there's a ton of ways to look at it, but I just, I just don't know that we have any certain clarity that can say, well, this is the likely manner. The most likely manner that it's going to go is based on the research that the committee did because it pencils in a certain way for us. It's going to pencil in a certain way for somebody else in a very similar fashion. So my, my question was, uh, and, and I appreciate your answer to that, but my question was, what would it look like? for us to have control of our situation here? What needs to happen? It, well, we have to buy it. And to buy it, right, we have to, we have to get the money. We have to get a very quick vote done. That's, that's how we buy it. And it has to, yeah. So we gotta, we, gotta, we gotta kick a vote out the door, right? That's gotta happen. And then- uh, No whispering. Right. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. <laughs> One more yeah. question, and then that's it. So you're going to have to repeat. Can you the I can't. They keep. Well, I don't want me on here. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Okay. All the way up. All right. Okay. Repeat. Do you need to repeat the question? Well, I, the question, as I understood it, is what would need to happen. And, and when I go back to, you know, the challenges, right, uh, assuming it's, it's not doing anything. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and turn it on. So, um, okay. So we, we'd have to hurdle these, right, is what would have to happen, right? We'd have to, right. we'd have to, we'd have to come up with the money, not just the minimum bid, but, right, right. so we have to do an assessment, we have to do something, right? And we obviously we got to hit the auction time frame. We'd have to put a vote out. People would have to say yes. And then on the back side of that, we'd have to collect the money because it's got to be sitting in the bank, right? So that you can take that statement over and say, okay, I got the money. And then there's a ten thousand dollar, I think it's ten thousand or twenty thousand dollar fee or something like that just to just to be able to do it. That's in my mind, that's what would have to happen. I saw that. Uh, MG that. Johnson, yes. Section 7, yes. Lot 85. I wonder, Adam, when you were negotiating with uh, the Holiday Inn Club Vacations or Silver Leaf or whoever you negotiated with, 
did they indicate to you what their incentive would be to actually do an LOI when it would seem like it would be to their advantage financially to auction off property that had access to the amenities. I mean, I don't, I don't see, did they just want to not deal with that? In essence, yes. Um, what they're selling over there has a clean title. It's warrantied. It's all of that. You as a buyer can come in and have reasonable assurance just based on the facts that Michelle had talked about with a warranty deed and all of that. It, they would be hard pressed, I think, to find a lot of the information that was found through a lot of hard work by a lot of folks to be able to get a hold of this. And then we talk about encumbrances. So if I'm going to sell that place, but oh, and by the way, I'm marrying you un unjointedly now with uh, this homeowners association. Well, that, that's an encumbrance. So that inherently starts to lower some values. And no, and now you've got to look after them. They're going to take care of the taxes, and they're going to do this, and they're going to do that. OK, well, what other liabilities are there? Well, there's this, and well, there's that. So when you look at it from Silverlease perspective, just my personal speculation, I, they haven't told me this, but I would think that they're divesting. I mean, we're talking about a multinational company. And as much as we love Little East Texas, they, they don't necessarily love East Texas because it doesn't make them any money, you know? So as soon as they can break this thing and kind of get out and go do what they do, I think it's the, the, the better off it is for them. So, um, and truly, I think they're trying to be good neighbors. Um, we have had some pretty good conversations um, to this point. Uh, we have taken them at face value and they've taken us at face value. Um, and they're willing to gift us an incredible gift to this ranch. So, you know, not, not to be emotional and mushy, but <laughs> we'll take it. I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> yeah, Chad Blakeman, Section 9. I'm a licensed realtor. Today I walked a property. Uh, I just want to say a couple of things real quick, just to clean some stuff up. Just I don't know if I'm overstepping here. But the, the auction can last longer than two days. Uh, it's a Crexie auction. They have the right to extend it. They do. They do have a right to extend it, and they can, and they probably more than likely will. Uh, and second of all, the uh, low income, it's not going to happen. And the reason why is because transportation. You got to have transportation. If you don't have transportation, you don't have means to uh, uh, entity to work. You're just not going to have uh, low income. So, if you're stressing on the government coming in here and buying that, I it's a very unlikely probability. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Fair point. Well, I fundamentally disagree with that. They're hiding them out in airports right now. But anyway. Uh, question is in in your communications with the uh, uh, green leaf or, or whoever they are uh, <laughs> did you ever get an indication that they might sit down with us and talk about making some kind of a short-term deal that would give us time to do all that if we approached them and said look if you could give us 90 days we'll have this purchased we absolutely did. Um, we found out the auction went live a few hours probably before you all did. And our first response was, hey, guys, we've talked at length about the requirements as outlined in our bylaws, about 209, about everything that governs the way that we are forced to do business. And we need an opportunity to go to homeowners and say, this is exactly what it is. We need due diligence. We need to do a variety of things. Can you give us some time? And, and, the, and the response was, we have a duty fiduciary responsibility to our shareholders. We have an enormous carrying cost, all of these things, and it was declined. My question, though, is now, would it be possible to go to them and try to uh, make a time deal where we can get through these hurdles? No, sir. We've, we've already talked to them about that, and they, they, they said yeah. no. Okay. Thank you, sir. We have... I'm just going to let everybody know it's about a quarter to nine, so we do have some more time, but um, if so, if you have some more questions, feel free to get in line.
Robert Weber, Section 4. You said the LOI had to be voted on by the members. Is there time before the election to do all that? I think I messed up. Um, we are voting on the, on the acquisition of common property. That is what we will eventually vote on. The mechanism to inform and to get there and to articulate what that contract will look like is the LOI. Um, can we get that done prior to? We face nearly some of the same hurdles up here. It's 21 days. There's a day of notification. 20 days, we've got to get that thing out. There's a day of counting. Um, have we sufficiently informed everyone? You know, all of those things that we think about, I think it's a, it's a fantastic deal, but folks that aren't here tonight or may not watch this or just, you know, get this random ballot and they're like, you want me to what? You want me to acquire several hundred acres of common property? I, I don't know what that is and I don't know what it's cost. No thanks. Uh, so I think we have to do our due diligence and giving everybody an opportunity to inform them and so on and so forth. Is it possible? Yes, sir. Is it likely? No. Well, then, if somebody else bought it, if someone else bought it, would that mean they could say, well, we don't want anything to, to do with that? No. We're talking two separate things. We're talking your lakes and golf courses, and they're selling their resort over there. Right. Yeah, we don't have the time squeeze on the common areas that we've got on this because it's this auction format, right? I'm Deanne Sills, Section 4. We've kind of talked about all of this. I think a lot of people are interested in actually possibly purchasing the, part, the property for safety. Can we not go ahead and send out the ballots and find out what the response is from everybody rather than just talking about it? Because what are our next well, steps once we leave here tonight is my question. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Is, is there genuine interest? I'll ask the a genuine question. Is, is, there, is, there, is there genuine interest in purchasing the property? Yes. Is there not interest in person? Pretty close. Okay. So. We talked about it, so. What are the next steps? I mean, are we going to. Yeah. The, the next step would be well, if, if it's to move so forward, then send out the, the ballots, rally up the troops for the election committee, and, the, and get it going. The, the problem with that, sorry, the problem with that is those of you that are willing to pay some bucks, how much are you willing to pay? We don't know how much it's going to cost. Yeah. So reality is you can't get it done in that time frame, guys. You can't do it. So, I mean, really I wish we could control it. What? If they're really interested, get the woman that come up here that wanted to put the group together, get the other one that wanted to put the group together, and y'all meet at Richie's in the morning and put your money where your mouth is and buy the damn thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what talking about. It. Hang on one second. Dwayne? There's an additional answer. To further what... Bill Wilkins said, it's really an impossibility to put all this together the way you want from the viewpoint of what would the ballot even say? You're going to vote for approval of buying it with an open check? Or are you going to put a maximum bid limit on it? I mean, you don't even know what you're voting on. Just, just vote. <laughs> Hi, my name my name's Aaron Zook. I'm from Section Four. Uh, Adam, I know you tried to explain very clearly about the common property and the LOI. I still think there was some confusion in the air. I was confused initially. What I understood you to say is that you, as a board, can sign the LOI along with H HICV or whatever it's called now, a uh, Silverleaf, and you don't need a vote for that, but you could do that and you might get it done before the 27th, or whenever they do the, or I'm sorry, the, uh, but the, for the auction. And then after that, is LOI is concluded, and we have a gentleman's agreement, so to speak, with them about what they'll do, 
then later on, you'll bring it to us as property owners to vote on the acquisition of that. Mm -hmm. And that property, or the gentleman's agreement, so to speak, will allow us the time to take the 21 days to do all the things that we have to do to get everything together. Is that correct? Exactly what Aaron said. <laughs> yes. yes. Passwords to my computer and stuff are in there. <laughs> okay, this is kind of an extension of what Mr. Zook had to say and the question my wife had. Oh, Tommy Seals, uh, I'm in Section 4. Uh, the deal behind it is some people are for it, some people are not. Okay? But you have a vested interest of a lot of people that are very interested in, in, in you know, helping and supporting what we own here and what we want to keep. The deal is, come up with an idea of what you think people want, well, what people will, will pay. What will I pay to keep a vested interest in what my property is? If you don't want to go beyond that, that's fine. But you at least have the amount of money or the money up front, like Mark said, to go out and buy this thing. Bottom line. If it's over 2000 and you don't want to do over 2000 you keep it and have a cap on it. You're going to put the $2,000 up yes. before you vote. I'll write a check tonight. Okay, and you're going to go get us $4.5 million by the 14th. Because it's got to be in the bank when you bid. Okay, so go get that done and bring us back $4.5 million, and we can give you the facts of what it's worth and what can be done. But you got to remember, everyone in people that say they're going to write that check for the $2,000, I'll bet you how many do and how many don't. And you won't come up with the four and a half million dollars. Your best bet is to get the people that really want to buy it, quit talking, put your money where your mouth is, and get a group together and go buy it. Separate from HOA. Separate. Look, this board can't do nothing. We got to a ball hanging around our neck, we would have to get a vote on everything we do over there because it's not part of Holly Lake Ranch. We can't pump a septic tank out over there without getting a vote until it goes into Holly Lake Ranch. You don't stand a snowball's chance in Hades of getting it done by the 14th. The only way you're going to do it is to get an outside group that will quit talking about it, put the money where your mouth is, and sign the contract, bid against it. We don't know if this auction's going to be one million. Ten minutes later, somebody bids one, two, five, oh. Is that going to go on the website to let you know? Okay. You don't know that. It don't say that. An auction is a person standing up there telling you what people are bidding. We can't get together. We can't get approval for $2 million, and then we find out it goes to $3 million. We don't have the approval to go anymore. If there's people that's interested in doing it, get together and go do it. There's people out here that's got money to buy this. There's plenty of it. Yeah, Tommy Sills, Section 4, if you're interested, call me. <laughs> Hold on one moment. Stacy, did you have something? Oh, I was just going to say the 14th is actually too late because there's only 29 days in February. Well, was the 14th referring to the 4th on the auction? Yeah, the auction starts March 4th. It's the 4th. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, uh, we just have a few more minutes. Uh, Tommy, okay, if you're serious and there are people that want to do that, you come up here and meet. You guys that are interested, come up here and meet. Okay. As soon as this is over. We got about five minutes. One more question here. Do you know, I don't understand what kind of auction is this going to be? Is it going to be like online, in person? Yes. How will you know Online what the, auction. how do you know? 
how you're bidding or? Well, it, when you look at it, it, there's a button that says bid history. I don't know if that's going to tell you anything. I don't know if it'll tell you who's bid, how much. Like eBay or something? It's an online auction. $10,000 participation fee. Right. For those of you who didn't hear what Michelle just said, there is a $10,000 participation fee right. as well as your bid, as well as a broker fee up front. Up front. Okay, so just keep, just keep those things in mind. Hi, um, my name is Doug Durst. I live in uh, Section 4, and, and my question is, what happens if they don't get a million dollars? What if nobody bids on it? Again, it's back to the hope strategy. It'd be awesome, right? Then, then maybe... Is there any uh, contingency uh, that you guys have thought about uh, in case we that would happens? We would expect to have, if the, if the auction was not successful, we would expect to have a conversation with them. That's what we would expect to do. I mean, we've got, you know, and have had regular meetings for, Adam's had them for, you know, a year and a half, every a biweekly meeting, right? So I would expect there'll be a conversation. You're talking about a, a, a complicated corporation. Uh, have you thought about maybe saying, okay, if your bid doesn't come through, uh, maybe we can give you a certain amount and you can take the rest off in, in uh, taxes? Taxes? Uh, uh, you know, the uh, tax credits for a corporation, I, I'm sure. Oh, like if they wrote down part of it and right. took, yeah. Right. Okay. Well, well, you know, all I could say is we'll just have to see where the auction goes and then see where that takes us. You know, we're, if it doesn't okay. happen, maybe we've got an opportunity. Okay, uh, we've got a lot of murmuring going on, but we're not quite down. We've got a few more minutes, so let's please quiet and let's, let's let them ask some questions. I'm not going to ask. Sorry, I'm going to make a couple more st statements real quick. It is a, on, uh, a live auction, so when you place a bid on there, you will see the actual amount. So if anyone's concerned about that, that is actually, it will go. Good. Your participation, you, don't only, you only get a participation if you actually get hit for the actual bid. So. That's not true. Arthur Johnson, Section 5. I don't care for your attitude. I don't care for your attitude. I don't care for your attitude. Keep your keep your temper down. You, I don't care for your attitude. Put your money where your mouth is. You can use better terminology. All right. Do we have any other questions tonight? Come here, Bill. No. 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 Yes, I do. Uh, any other questions? Okay. No? No, he's... Have to go to the microphone. Okay, we're done. All right, guys. Um, I want to remind everybody that if you have any other questions or comments you want to make, please, please feel free to do that on All feedback. Right at hollylakeinfo.com. Sure. Thank you all Enjoyed for coming. Okay, I'll take that little thing you didn't want in there. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. I